Hey, 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 ladies and gentlemen, Carl Bryan coming at you. And I am not on the beach. I am wearing my silly hat. Look at my new hat. Don't pretend like you're not impressed. Got some branding going on. I think you just looked up my nose. Um, here's what I'm doing. It is 3.30 in the morning. We are about to start business coaching mastery. This is how it's all going down. So I thought I'd do a little YouTube video. I've been busy, 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 busy. And how are we looking? Are we looking? And we got a couple big screens. I got some plants. Touch up. There's my backpack. Some plants. A little plant. So this is what I'm doing. Very early in the morning. I am here practicing. I figured while I'm practicing, why don't I drop a YouTube video? For you folks, hey. Um, one of the things I'm going to say in my opening is that um, you know people like a lot of influencers are spew out advice that is hollow at best, out of context um, many a times. And like as an example, practice makes perfect. Practice does not make perfect. Um, if you have a bad golf swing and you keep practicing it over and over again, it does not magically become perfect. Practice would make permanence, but practice does not make perfect. So the more that you practice the golf swing um, that's no good, you are just going to find that you're going to make it more and more difficult for you to turn that golf swing around. Another thing that I'm going to talk about is systems will set you free. Systems will not set you free. Systems stifle creativity. Um, if you're selling ice cream, it's one thing, but if you want to build a real business that resembles legacy, that grows beyond yourself, um, what you're going to need to do is you need to hire professionals. You know what professionals don't want? They don't want to be boxed in. They don't want to be told, um, you know, what to do. They, uh, yeah, they, they want to be able to use, they want to work autonomously and they want to be able to use their creativity and use their imagination. Um, so if you want to build a big business, you've got to hire people that are smarter than you. My observation, my experience, what I have seen is that very few people have hired people that are smarter than themselves. They've heard the advice, they'll nod their head, they'll put up their hand, but they're not doing it. Again, so knowing and doing are two different things. You don't, if you're not doing it, you don't know it, in my opinion. I've got the good fortune of having a very low IQ. So it's very easy for me to hire people that are smarter than me. So there you go. Maybe, maybe I'm just an advantage. Um, but I can tell you I've hired a lot of people that are, I have a lot of people that work for me currently who will be in this room very, very shortly, much smarter than I, uh, employed by Focus.com. But um, so I would say that, um, but there has to, of course, you have to systematize at a certain level. Um, you know, like that's a one-on-one -on -one. you need to do it. Your coaching clients need to do it, but to think that you're going to systematize this thing to death and then be able to bring in, you know, high level professionals and box them in would be, um, I think incorrect. Maybe, maybe you've had a different experience, but I doubt it. Um, everybody hates advertising until they need to sell their own car is something else we're going to talk about. You know, it's, um, you know, people, business owners, the chiropractor, the dentist, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, um, they will pump their chest and tell you that they built their entire business on word of mouth and referrals um, and make out like that's a really good idea. But let me just tell you something, profit, advertising to profit is a superpower. So if they built their business on word of mouth and referrals, imagine how far they could have got um, if they would have done a little bit of advertising. That's my, uh, that's my take on it. But again, wouldn't you agree that everybody hates advertising until they need to sell their own car? Isn't that ironic? And another thing I'm going to talk about is ideas, um, hard work um, bursts profitable ideas. And the best way to have a profitable idea, the best way to have a good idea is to have lots of ideas. The problem is you have lots of ideas and then you don't capture them. You got to make sure you capture them. Are you carrying a, uh, you know, like a, Richard Branson is famous for carrying a very small little, um, what do you call it? Notepad that could fit in the back pocket. Um, so, and he, he literally, he'll tell you many interviews there where he's got boxes and boxes and boxes of these things. So he, he actually captured 
um, his his ideas. The other thing that happens in you get an 80% chance of retaining information or an 80% better chance of retaining information if you actively participate, as in you write it down. Um, so again, I believe that he would come up with good ideas, write them down, and then even if he didn't revisit all of those notepads, and let's face it, if he had boxes and boxes and boxes, I find it hard to believe that he revisited them all. Um, but he's got a higher level of retaining them. So so there you go. So folks, that is what I am doing. Maybe that's a little bit of helpful advice for you this morning. Uh, while I sit here and get ready, let me just show you some of our merchandise. Look at that. We've got some uh, sunglasses. We've got a water bottle. We've got a new phone case. We've got clear phone cases. Got a trucker hat, got a pink hat for the ladies, or maybe some of the guys want to wear a pink hat. Look at that, some underwear, the smell of profit acceleration. There's a funny story behind that. I used to own a hockey rink, and we used to have these uh, boxer shorts, were red, and they used to say the smell of hockey, and they were so ridiculously popular. The, the only problem we had is I couldn't produce enough of them. We'd literally get them in and they'd be sold out before they got there. So I thought we'd do something cute, you know, the smell of profit acceleration, see how it goes. Um, we've also got some coffee mugs and then we've got, try it again here, the smell of profit acceleration, coffee. Um, got some sandals. Truthfully, they're not the most comfortable, but hey, that's okay, first run. Uh, this is a journal. Speaking of journals, I don't know if you can see that. This is a very expensive journal. Um, we did a small run, but it didn't matter. Um, they're just expensive leather. That's leatherembossedfocus.com. We got some sweatshirts. It says business coach on the back. It says profit acceleration on the back. Um, we got pink t-shirts for the ladies. Tried to convince my daughter to wear one. She wants no part of it. Um, but anyway, so there you go, folks. That's what I'm doing. What are you doing at 3.30 in the morning? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'd be lying to say I'm not a little nervous, but I am here at 3.30 practicing, putting in the hard yards. And I think that maybe, just maybe, I will be rewarded by way of an excellent opening by the fact that I am here practicing when everybody else is sleeping. We shall find out. All right, folks. Anyways, that's all I got for you. So I am on my bike. I ain't riding along the number one beach in the world, which I'd love to be. Uh, but actually, truthfully, I'd rather be here. I am right where I want to be. Business coaching mastery. So it's all this room, we tidied up massively very quickly, but uh, that's what I'm doing. God bless. Bye-bye.